what made me to decide to join the army at the time i had worked a lot of different jobs and during that time uh, i guess it's still true today they could easily just let you off you know lay you off and not even think twice about it so i had some responsibilities that i needed to take care of and the opportunity presented itself so i went ahead and joined. I actually had no idea about how to join the army. Uh, I had a really good friend of mine, but that's still a good friend to me uh, to this day, came to me and he was thinking about joining the Marines at first. Uh, once he, but then he changed to the army. I'm pretty sure it was the Marines at first. So then he changed to the army and uh, I should say he wanted to join the Marines at one point, but then he came to me about joining the army. So when he came to me about joining the Army, we went to the recruiting center and sat down with the recruiter. And the recruiter told me and him that, you know, we only have one slot for MP. Because he wanted to be an MP. I didn't know anything about joining the Army. I just needed, like, a stable job. And when the recruiter told us that he only had one slot for MP, we wanted to join together. So when the recruiter told us that he only had one slot for MP, uh, we were like, well, what else do you have? He's like, well, I have tanker, 19 kilo. And then he showed us this video at the time, which seemed really cool. <laughs> the tank was jumping over something and shooting. So that kind of pushed it over the edge. He had two slots for us to join together. And the rest was pretty much history. Like we joined. Yeah, he had, the, he had the slots and we joined together after that. But uh, showed us the video and that was it. But I actually, I didn't know anything about joining the army. I didn't even know that that was a thing, honestly. Because I didn't even, that was the furthest thing from my mind. So I do owe a lot to him for that because I don't know where I would be right now without the army, you know. It really uh, changed my life for the better, for the positive. Without me knowing what would happen, I don't know if I can say that, but I know it has put me in a very good spot. I owe a lot to the Army. Mm, but I mean, yeah, he came to me about joining the Army. I had some responsibilities. And really the main question was what made me decide to join the Army. Really it was those responsibilities that I had that were very serious. And I didn't mean to be in a position where I couldn't take care of those responsibilities. can't just be every day, day to day, wondering if it's gonna be your last time you can uh, have some money in your pocket when you have responsibilities, you know, like, like that. I needed something more secure, more stable, and I knew from what I did know of the Army after we talked, I knew that this was gonna be a stable place for me to be, to be able to take care of those responsibilities. That's why I joined the Army. <laughs> that's what made me decide to join the Army. And that's exactly, that's what made me decide to join the Army. And that's what, uh, how I joined the Army, too. So you got like a twofer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got like a twofer. I'm going to have to play it back, make sure I said everything. But yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much the gist of it. If not exactly, I wish he was here. I actually talked to him earlier today and we were joking about that, that whole scenario when we went to join. Oh, and I am glad I didn't become an MP, boy. Woo! I'm glad I didn't become an MP. They got the worst schedule out. I mean, every job in the Army is important, but me personally, I could not work that MP schedule that I see them working. So I'm glad, you know, everything happened for a reason. So at the end of the day, when they didn't have MP, uh, that was for, or two slots for MP, that was for a reason, you know? That was definitely for a reason. Oh, this is what I wanted to say about when we went to join and they showed us the tank uh, jumping over the thing. I told myself, yeah, that's gonna be great. I would love to do something in the army that I can't just do normally, you know, just anywhere else. So that was something else. 
Yeah, stability was my main reason. I guess I could have just said stability. <laughs> I don't think that would have been as interesting as my story. <laughs> Let me see if I can. Uh... That was definitely, yeah. Stability was my main reason for joining the Army. And it has provided that stability, I could say. You know, there's always ups and downs with every job that you go to, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, that stability was definitely there. You know. Who that we got? Who that just popped up? It's not showing who it is, so I don't know. It says three. But anyway, yeah, stability. Did that answer your question? I'm sure it did. It's another question. So that that brings me, since that was a question about joining the army, that brings me to my topic at hand, you know, the title of the live stream. I appreciate everybody taking the time to come to the live stream who's here and everybody who's gonna watch it after the uh live live stream live event you know uh, the question at hand is how to join the army the first steps you want to take is going to happen before you even go to a recruiter or talk to a recruiter these are going to be the important steps this is you just thinking about who you are and what your situation is you know you need to ask yourself certain questions before you even take the time to go out there and look for a recruiter this is something that you want to do I want to give you the best opportunity to be able to uh, make it through the process. So I want you to make it through the, uh, I want to give you the best opportunity for making it through the process. So before you even head out or you talk to a recruiter, you need to ask yourself a couple of questions. The first question I would, if I was in your shoes or I recommend that you ask is, uh, you know, do I have any law violations? Okay. So if you have any type of law violations that are open, my suggestion to you is go ahead and take care of those law violations first. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not going to be possible for you to join the Army with an open law violation. Now, I've been out the game for a while. I'm going to say that for a while uh, as a disclaimer. But I think these tips right here in the very beginning, these are the most basic tips that's going to help you be successful regardless of where you go. You know, that's what I'm trying to give you. So if you have any open law violations, you need to take care of those law violations first. I'm talking like a ticket, everything down to the simplest ticket. Just take care of that first because you, you want to make your recruiter's job easy as well. You know, because if there's any type of roadblock, anything that's going to stop you from joining the army, you know, there's certain things that take longer than others, especially in certain places. You know, certain places have are stricter on certain things, no matter what you tell me, you know? So make sure if you have a law violation, you take that law violation, you get it taken care of before you go to the recruiting office. That's that's the, that's number one. These are in no particular order, but you need to make sure you clean up this stuff first, okay? The next thing you wanna probably do, and if you have a law violation uh, and it's closed and it's sealed, it's closed, uh, I would take it to the recruiting station once you get through all these other things and uh, let them determine because everyone's situation is different when it, I don't know what the violation is, so I can't tell you, but there's a few things, you know, if you, if you had an incident where there was some type of uh, domestic violence, uh, you're going to, you, you, you probably, you probably not where there was a weapon involved. I, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be able to, uh, you're going to have a hard time, but if not, you're not going to be able to get it. The next thing, I'll tell you like this, uh, are you overweight? You know, are you a big person? You know, look yourself in the mirror, be realistic because the army has a high and weight standard. And when you go to the recruiting office, the first thing, no matter what anybody tells you, they're gonna look dead at you physically first 
and say, and 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 look at you fit your your physical fitness and how you look, and automatically gonna start disqualifying you because that's just the, the, there's nothing we can do to work around that without your help. You know, there's nothing they can do. Sorry, I'm not a recruiter anymore. I was, but there's nothing they can do uh, to help that. Now, it's gonna be on you to lose that weight. Ultimately, you know, ultimately. I would, what I would do is maybe you could go to a recruiting office and find out what the height and weight standard is for your uh, age and uh, your height, your, your height. Yeah. So that way, you know what goal to prepare for to get down to or get within reason with so that they can uh, go ahead and proceed with the process. You know, so law violations, make sure they take taken care of. Height and weight, make sure you got good height and weight, you know. Uh, but if you know, you know, every, be realistic with yourself, you know. You know you got a couple of pounds. You want to try to go to basic training as strong as possible, to be honest. So if you know you got a couple pounds, a couple things to work on, I would suggest that you take the time to go ahead and work on those things before so that, you know, you, you just that much more prepared. You just that more prepared. Much- than you were, then you you be stronger, or you'll be strong. Work on your fitness and work on your law violations. Next thing, I would say uh, education. You know, do you have a high school diploma? Do you have a GED? You know, if you don't have a high school diploma or a GED, you definitely want to work on that. Getting your high school diploma and your GED. The whole thing with joining the army is kind of like a video game. You know, there's levels, there's stages. First stage, this is you just preparing to even go to the recruiting center or talk to a recruiter. So that when it's time for them to actually start the process or for them to, uh, yeah, to start the process, there won't be any roadblocks that you can control. You know, uh, high school diploma, GED. Now, if you, everybody knows what type of person they are as far as you, or you should know, or if you don't know, you need to find out what type of person you are when it comes to education. Like, how do you learn? How do you, how do you, uh, are you someone who could just go into a place, just go to a test and just take it and pass? Or do you need preparation? Because you're going to want to get that ASVAB. You want to get the highest score as possible on the ASVAB. So study for the ASVAB before you even get to a good recruiting center. You know, unless you, you know, you might be a whiz kid, you know, but you want to study for the ASVAB uh, and score 50 and above, you know, anything over a 50, you're going to be all right. You should be all right. And that score is going to determine more than likely how many jobs you are going to be available to you when it comes time to pick your job. So I covered, so I covered education. Cover your law violations and I cover your height and weight. The highest score you could get is a 99, I believe. And the lowest score, 31. 31. It's been a while. You we but we're not shooting for no low score. You know what I'm saying? That's not even that doesn't we don't even need to know that. You know, we don't need to know that. So, but you're 50 and above, that's your sweet spot. That's your sweet spot. Um, Do you have any tattoos on your face, neck, and hands? You know, you got tattoos on your face, neck, and hands. Now, Now, this is something after that you've gotten everything else in order that I would I would, I would, I would say that you could probably attempt to go to the recruit center if you have something maybe on your hands, because when I left, there was some waverable type things that, uh, that maybe you could still get in. So face was pretty much a no go, uh, neck maybe depending where it is, but you know, you don't want to show up there with tattoos on your face, neck and hands or face, neck or hands. Open law violations, 200 pounds overweight, no no GED, no high school diploma. I mean, 
you got you, you got to give them something to work with, you know. So if you if you're good in all the other areas, there may be a time where you can. Uh, there may be a time where you can, where it can be wavered, but I'm not guaranteeing that. Nothing I'm saying is guaranteed because the army changes all the time. The army changes all the time, but I won't say nothing I'm saying is guaranteed. If you put yourself in these positions, you'll be better off. You'll be better off. Okay, so I got a question here that says, what would be a good MOS to recommend that will also be great transitional to the civilian world? Huh. If you ask me anything in the office, <laughs> but more specifically, uh, uh, which I don't think this is office logistics. I believe logistics is a good one. Uh, working in S1, that's personnel. Working in finance, anything in the finance. <laughs> working in finance. S1, finance. You know, Part of the reason I believe that we were going to join as MPs is because he wanted to one, my buddy wanted to one day transition into a police officer after at some point. And I hear mixed things about MP. This is still with the same question that sometimes they don't want to take uh, military. And, and this is, this is just, there's no facts that I, you know, I never researched it. I never wasn't, never been in it, but from what I've heard is that they don't want to take military uh, policemen on the police force uh, because they've already been trained a certain way. So, but in the time that we living in today, I don't think they're going to be so picky. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I don't think they're going to be as picky. You know what I mean? They probably, <laughs> they probably like, can you hold a gun? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> can you see out of one eye? You know, like, if you, you go up there as an MP, they probably like, hey. <laughs> well, well, I don't know what's the top person on an MP, but uh, they, <laughs> he, he, lieutenant, he's a lieutenant, not MP, sorry, as in the police force. <laughs> you go up there as an MP, they probably make you the chief of police, you know what I'm saying, in this day and age, but... Uh, <laughs> I've always heard uh, that it was that was one thing that was tough to transition to. So I would that 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 one's a little iffy. But if you would if you was to ask me my stamp of approval for uh, my stamp of approval for the jobs that are great for transitioning, if they sit behind a desk, which you wouldn't know, but it would be S one finance logistics. Something with aircraft, if you're gonna be like a some and probably anything with aircraft, you probably could come in and four years here with some training and go probably make six figures on it with aircraft. I'm, I would think. Uh, so those are to name a few, but those are the those are those would be the main ones. Um, got another question here. Can you get in as a single parent? When I was recruiting, you could not get in as a single parent. So in order for you to get in as a single parent, you would have to have someone else take the right, uh, parental rights of your, like a family. I mean, you would choose who it was if you were a single parent, of course, but I would assume it would be like a family member. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, maybe you don't like them kids, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, <laughs> uh, you would have to give those parental rights over to someone and then you would be able to join the army. And then you would need something called a family care plan, uh, basically saying who's going to be the person in charge of taking care of your child or children while you're away. That's for females yes for females well a male single parent as well if i remember correctly but uh those are some great questions i hope i answered them no problem adventures of nine mark uh thank you for that question santi uh 
Thank y'all for showing, for coming by, Jessica, Santi, Imar, M. Thomas. Let me see if there's some people in here who ain't said nothing so I could call their names too. Okay. It's weird because it says there's more people than it, it shows the number of people more. So it's, maybe there's like some stalkers, but um, <laughs> which is good. I'm expecting this live stream to hit the YouTube cap of whatever that is, at least 10,000. You know what I mean? That's why I waited around in the beginning. Uh, but I would I didn't want to wait for all 10,000 people to show up because, you know, that I didn't want to waste the people who showed up on times time. You know what I'm saying? That, that was be just straight disrespect, you know? So, but you know, it's, it's about to be flooded. I mean, we're about to break the internet probably here in the next 10 minutes or so. I don't know, but we might be gone by then too. You know, you got to catch us when you catch us. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Most are from Miami. Yeah. So they, <laughs> they run a little different down there in Miami. You know what I mean? It's different. Uh, yeah. So the, the advice that I gave you in the beginning, if you are looking to join the army, most definitely you want to take those things into consideration and implement them, man. Work on your run. You know, now they have a new PT test, the ACFT. It's a little bit different from the PT test that I've been taking for years. Uh, it's going to be a lot of lifting, some throwing, uh, Definitely Google the ACFT. Get yourself prepared to take that. Definitely study for the ASVAB before going to take it. Don't just go in there co and then say, well, they didn't give me any jobs and I got a 31. You know what I'm saying? The 31, bro, <laughs> that's going to be tough. The 88, what, what's the 88 whiskey? So 31 is going to be, you know what? The age limit may have changed recently, but when I would have to Google that for y'all, but at the, but when I was recruiting not too long ago, uh, 35 was the cutoff. 35, 35 was the cutoff. Have a good one, sir. That's a good question though. Let me see. That's a real good question. Watercraft operator. I would think that would be a good job too to uh transition to watercraft operator. I mean, you're army trained to operate watercraft. I'd pick up somebody right away if I had some watercraft that needed to be operated and they came from the army. So I mean, I can't see anybody else uh not thinking the same way. I mean. Soldiers in general, you know, soldiers in general, good soldiers. <laughs> but yeah, is there any other questions? Let me see. I had, I had, let me make sure I hit all my points too, because I have some points on here that I wanted to make sure I hit. Oh, I don't think I hit this. Drugs. Yeah. Good things, you know, when you get a little older, you got to write stuff down, you know what I'm saying? So drugs, if you are a drug user, you know what I mean? Uh, it's not going to happen. If you smoke weed, you got to wait till you clean, you know, to give you the best, the best uh, opportunity to join. Wait till you clean. Wait till you clean. Ah. And... I'm pretty sure they sell over-the-counter drug tests. So I would drug test myself before I went to the recruitment center, you know, stop smoking. If you are unable to stop using drugs, then the first thing you need to do is get some help, okay? Get some help. It's helping you to stop using drugs. Clean yourself up. Clean up your life. Better your life by cleaning yourself up, taking my tips and my advice, you know, and then joining the Army. Will you be doing any recruiting in Cooper City? <laughs> I am no longer a recruiter. I am just trying to help people to 
you know, I, I want my channel to be able to help people. And of course, you know, them vegan food reviews, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it is also would like to help people in the army, trying to join the army, you know what I mean? Because the army changed my life, you know, and it's changed the lives of a lot of people that I care about too, you know, for the better. You know, whether they did a short amount of time or a long amount of time like me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I want to give everybody the best shot they can to receive the same type of blessings that me and the people I care about uh, receive, you know. So I'm no longer a recruiter, so I will not be doing any recruiting in Cooper City. But you might catch me in a city near you because I like to travel, you know what I mean? And if any of the people I care about is there, I'm going to be there. So, uh, But recruiting? Chilling? That's for me. <laughs> oh, y'all was waiting for me? Yeah. No, I appreciate y'all, man. Go ahead. I appreciate y'all. But, uh, yeah, recruiting? No, I'm, I, I did my time, you know, and that chapter is closed. Uh, now it's time to start a new chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Where I might be chilling in Cooper City, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Are there any deceptive recruiting tactics to look out for? Oh, that's a really good question. Let me tell you about deceptive recruiting tactics. Uh, first off, I don't see why any recruiter would be lying to anybody in this day and age. Man. I mean, me personally, it, it, it wasn't worth it to lie to anybody. It wasn't worth it. And maybe, and the recruiting center I came from, they nobody I worked with lied to anybody. Uh, are there liars? I mean, there's pe they're people. So there's people who do things for, that will lie for less, you know? There's people who that will lie for less, you know, but uh, I never lied to anybody. I would say that the number one lie that I hear people say is about the jobs, um, which when the computer says what jobs you have, when the computer says what jobs you have, man, that's that's the jobs you have, you know, and if you score and it's it'll be cast that score like a. 30 something and say they didn't get astronaut and I'm like hey, my recruiter lied to me you know my recruiter lied to me and said that there was the astronaut wasn't there but astronaut's not gonna be there if you got a 31 I mean I don't think astronaut gonna be there anyway but <laughs> if you got a low score on the ASVAB that's not the job's not gonna be there so as far as deceptive tactics I think that I personally think that there's a lot of uh I want to believe that most most recruiters are, if not, yeah, most, I'm not going to say all, are honest, right? But you got a situation where people don't know what the Army is about, and you explain it to them before, and then they get there, and it's not like that, and it's a lie. But at the end of the day, the Army's always changing, you know what I mean? So if recruiters are telling, just telling them the basics, the truth, you know, the, there's some basic things in the Army that's going to be true, you know? They're telling them that, and they're not. If they're not telling them that, honestly, then that would be lying. But this ain't back in the day. Like to me, back in the day, now if you join when I joined, and a, and a couple other cats I know joined, yeah, they was lying. They had incentives. You know, they was getting all types of rings, and they was getting types of badges, and uh, and they was and they was getting abused. You know, recruiters was getting abused back then, too. Seriously, like mentally, the, the suicide rate was high. There was a lot of reasons for people to lie back then. But, I mean, the recruiter center I came from, I recruited. And nobody I recruited with lied to soldiers. Every day I've been there for all those years, they never lied to a soldier. Uh, I never lied to a soldier. I told them, look, straight up, like, it's going to be like any other job. It's going to have its ups and downs. You know what I mean? But would you rather have, uh, and I, this is exactly what I would say. I was like, would you rather have a, a down day 
at McDonald's with no benefits, you know, nothing against anybody that works at McDonald's, but if you have the opportunity to join the army and have maybe a down day or two at the army with full benefits, <laughs> I mean, and then I used to walk away, you know what I'm saying? I used to straight walk away and then they would chase me down. Oh, excuse me. No, nah, I don't know. <laughs> no, nah, but uh, I want to make sure I answer your question correctly. So, but because I did kind of go off on a tangent a little bit, but are there any deceptive recruiting tactics to look out for? Man, you got to trust your gut. I'll tell you that. Trust your gut. If it don't sound right, it might not be right. And then, and then you know what? If it don't sound right, research it. You know what I'm saying? Go research it. Go research it. If you don't, 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 don't get no, don't get no pressure. You know, don't feel, don't feel too pressured. You know what I mean? If if it feels too pressured, and and it feels like someone's being deceptive or a recruiter's being deceptive, then Research what they're telling you. And then you have the right to, to go to a different recruiter. So it's always an option. Adventures in Iron Mar, was that, did I get you on that? Ashy knees, knock knees. I don't know what that means, but if you got ashy knees, you could get in, but you better get you some lotion. I'd get some lotion. Uh, can you join the military without being a citizen? I'm from Ireland. I'm considering moving to America to join the Marines. Uh, honestly, I can't speak on what the Marines do. I don't know what the Marines policy is. And I've been out the game for the Army. But I can tell you that you can get your citizenship through joining the... Uh, where I'm from, actually. You can join the Army... And get your citizenship. Uh, it is possible. I don't know about Ireland. Ireland. That's a good question. But plenty of people I know have joined the army and received their citizenship. Army. Marines. I don't know, man. They may have the same thing. They may not. I like this. The ashy knees are a sin. Yeah. I mean, shh. my mother seen me with some ashy hands one time on a video and called me and told me, look, you need to put lotion on before you get on video, you know? Like, so, yeah, ashy knees where I'm from is a sin too. Knees, I mean, she didn't even see my knees and I'm pretty sure I didn't put lotion on my knees that day because I was wearing long pants, <laughs> you know? But, uh, yeah, yeah, she did. What you mean she did? Oh, yes, yeah, she did. She called me and told me, hey, you need to put some lotion on them hands next time you get on camera. Straight up. Now, I I, I, I do, I mean, let, let me get personal with y'all. I do throw lotion on my knees <laughs> when I wear long pants most of the time, okay? <laughs> UCP, ACU camo, thoughts on UCP. I'm not sure what UCP ASUs. Well, I'll tell you like this, since you asking about, that's right, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, get it all with that. Oh, I use that cocoa butter. Um, Let me get back to the question though, right quick. Thoughts on, I'm gonna tell you like this, since the question is about camel, uh, I've never, I don't know what UCP, but. Straight up camo though, uh, man, I've been through all of them, bro. I've been through all of them. We talking DCU, BDU, ACU, ASU? The blue looking one, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all of them, man. And my thoughts are that the best uniform that we ever had in the army that I've been in, besides Hold on, let me not say besides. The best uniform that we ever had that I've been in was BDUs. Man, BDUs? Because because you asked me my thoughts, Great Crusader, I'm going to let you know why, straight up. You know what I mean? Because not only could you wear this uniform in the field, right? This was not only a field uniform. You could also get fresh, get fresh 
at your company, okay? And they was just so iconic, man. You know, I'm getting like a little chill just thinking about it. You know what I mean? Like they was just so iconic. You you could get them uniforms and press them. You know what I'm saying? They stand up by themselves and put them on. Go to work, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. With the BDUs came the boots. Okay. With the BDUs came the boots. Now I got to talk about the boots too because. This is a whole package on my thoughts on camel. Uh, this is my thoughts on the camel. You would shine those boots up, right? This is a different army. You know, this is when the army, no, let me stop. But you can shine those boots up, get your BDUs, like the summer ones too, especially the summer ones, get the BDUs starched up, right? Crispy, razor sharp. Get your, because we used to wear berets all the time back then. We didn't wear uh, PCs like we do now. PCs like a patrol cap, look like a baseball cap. We used to wear berets, right? So you got your beret, you shaved your beret up. Like you could really show that you took pride in your uniform and in your, in your appearance. You know what I mean? Because the first thing anybody going to judge you on is how you look, especially in the army. You see a cat coming up with his uniform all messed up. You're like, oh, he, that's a dirt bag. You know what I'm saying? Off oh, rip. He ain't even say nothing. So we used to put on the beret. You used to shave your beret up. Your uniform used to be starch, pressed, razor sharp. You just pulled it right out the bag. You go ahead. You, your boots was shiny. You could see your face in them, especially if you had some tanker boots that wasn't the jungle boots. And you could shine it like all the way up the side, but especially the toe. And you go to work, and they'll call. They'll be like, first sergeant, the first sergeant, whoever's in front of the formation, I see you, and be like, hey, come here. You come up, you be like, hey, take the rest of the day off. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? You don't know what that feeling is, like, boy. I don't know, man. It did something for me because my uniform used to stay, stay sharp, boy. And then, and then, okay, you could take this same BDU uniform, go out in the jungle, <coughs> and get to work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you, you may not know what that is if you're not in the army, but you might. You go out to the field and get to work, bro. And just <sighs> you might have to join the army, but it was just a versatile uniform, man. It was the one piece do all, man. And then they just got rid of that and it started. But they took away the berets. The only thing that I like when they took away the berets, when you a tanker, you got to go down to the motor pool and uh, wearing that cat on your head, that dead cat, uh, <laughs> that raccoon on your head and that sun ain't no joke, boy. But uh, yeah, it was. And as far as I mean, I don't know if you're asking me about the technical side of it, man. When I went to combat the first time we was in uh DCUs, you know, and we was in the desert, so psh, that did it. You know, that that was exactly what we needed. Uh, when I went to combat, the that was the first. When I went the when I went the second time, we wore. Did we wear BD? Did we wear DCUs again? Man, it was a long time ago, man. I've been to combat in all the uniforms, let's say, and I would say that as far as combat goes, man, I mean. It's not about the uniform. It's about the cover, boy. <laughs> if you can take cover, bro, <laughs> if they can't see you, then it don't matter about the uniform. <laughs> Remember, it's a difference between, I should say not cover, concealment. Yeah, concealment, because it's a difference between cover and concealment. So let me go back. How many push-ups... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, they did. Yeah, Santi, you know what's up. I know you know what's up. I don't know. Head, shoulders. Yeah, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, Lola J. You got to make sure that, that we got to, we should make that a, in a handbook or something. I was a beast at iron them, yup. Shining game was on point. 
Thank you. Thank you for your service, Jose Castro. You're a stellar NCO. What's the name here? My favorite movie about the army. What's my favorite movie about the army? <laughs> hey. I think this probably happened to everybody, right? When I joined the army, I literally used to write down movie names <laughs> about the army. <laughs> if I'd never seen the movie, like I used to, I, I had a book with army name, or not movie, army movie names, right? I had a book and I write them down and I was like, man, I'm gonna watch this movie, especially when it was like right after basic training. Uh, now, <laughs> you know what's my favorite movie about the army? <laughs> <laughs> the one I starred in for the last <laughs> how many ever years, okay? I made it this far. Uh, I had a great supporting cast. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out a name for it, but you know what? I'm going to actually, who asked me that? Uh, Lola J. Lola J. I'm going to have to get back to you on that because I I do have I do have a favorite movie but it's not really, I don't have that time to my time. I want to get you the right one, you know what I'm saying? I know the question wasn't meant for me, but I'm going to say no. It'd be way too expensive to program. Hold on, I missed some. I missed some. I missed some. Hold up. Great Crusader, can you can you ask me the question again? Something about cyber warfare. Somebody asked me the question again because I don't see it, but. Okay, let me see what Great Crusader said. Great Crusader said, at Lola J, I know the question wasn't meant for me. There was a question about, do you believe robots will one day be used in the infantry? Man, you know what? I would say, I hope they use robots in the infantry. It kinda, I kind of hope so, because I'd rather risk a robot life than a human life. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather risk a robot life, but robots would one day be used in infantry. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if we could sit behind a computer somewhere and let a robot go out there and handle business, you know, why not? But do I believe it's going to happen? Uh, the army doesn't like to spend money. <laughs> No, no, no. The army likes to spend money, but they want the best deal. So I think somebody with a good deal, uh, if somebody came by with a really good deal, they might try it out. You know, <laughs> they like huh, $25 for the infantryman 2000 and you going to give me how many? might they might do it you know they might but i feel like uh that's a really good question i mean all these are really good questions but i feel like the army is already moving towards kind of uh robots in a sense taking over because technology is just growing you know technology is moving fast and it's not moving as fast as i thought as a side note because when i was like in middle school i for some reason i thought we would be like flying around in cars. We wouldn't even be driving on the ground and stuff. I, I probably was like in uh, closer to elementary, but, but yeah, uh, I feel like we kind of move into towards that in a way, because there's a lot of new technology that is helping soldiers achieve missions that we didn't have before, that we couldn't before. So when you say a robot, I mean, maybe one day, you know, because they're going to move forward, but you can never really take that human element out. You know, if you asking me, you can't take that 100% human element out. Somebody got to be there to make a couple of decisions, you know, still like that human element. You know, 
or robot, there's a lot of times where soldiers are faced with decisions that I don't think a robot could really comprehend the, the magnitude of the decision or the ramifications of that decision, you know? You know, I've been faced with some decisions in my army career and combat and things like that that was like, I don't know, but maybe the robots would be mad advanced, you know what I'm saying? You know, they would, <laughs> maybe they'll be super advanced and they'll be able to do that, you know? But I wouldn't, I, I would say they would have to wait until they were sure they were at that point uh, for them to fully take over. But do I believe that robots will one day be used in infantry? I think we're on our way there. I think we're on our way there. When? I don't know. I kind of hope it's, I'm not going to say when I hope it is, but I don't know when. Will the robot Marine still eat crap? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, uh, you know what? Probably the Marines, you know, the, the Marines are going to make sure that they program that out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the, the Marines is gonna make sure they program that out. They're like, finally, we can get this, get get this stigma out of here. <laughs> I don't care if it can shoot, okay, Bill. I don't care if it can shoot. I don't care if it can run. I don't care. Does it not eat crayons? Sold. <laughs> can you program it to not eat crayons? <laughs> I guarantee that's what they, the, the, I, I mean, if I was in charge and I had that easy stigma, I'm sure a computer programmer could be like, crayons, delete, you know? <laughs> Don't let it eat crayons, that's right. <laughs> crayons, delete. <laughs> but then when they get around, okay, so the next question would be, are they gonna, are the robots gonna be allowed to be around people, you know, around real Marines and stuff, you know, because even in the Army, we have our thing, you know, we have our things here and there, you know, not as much as the Marines, you know, but uh, then the robots might get it. See, they're going to have to program that, too. If offered crayons from other Marines, do not eat. <laughs> <laughs> Some serious programming, uh, Adam Frester. Serious programming, and they will be able to eliminate the crayon eatings from the Marines. He said, Noose Erton said, I ate a crayon when I was in kindergarten. I told that to my uncle who was in the 101st, and he came back, and I came back from Paris Island, and he said I was dead. <laughs> Start, started out young, man. <laughs> Fulfilled your destiny, brother. Fulfilled your destiny. <laughs> hey, yo, 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 uh, your uncle is a real one too, boy. He didn't let you be a kindergartner. He's a <laughs> you couldn't have just been a kindergartner, huh? You was a marine from from the from the first from kindergarten. You <laughs> that's a good one, man. I ate a Man, hey, you came back from Paris Island, man. Hey, whatever capacity you served in, I appreciate your service, man, from one service member to another, man. And uh, I hope, I was going to say, I hope you stop eating crayons, but I mean, if that's your thing, you know what I mean? Live your life, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> if you still doing it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I was just messing with you, noose. I was just messing with you. That was a good one. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm having a good time here talking to y'all, man. For real, for real. Like, the red ones taste the best. Noose. I'm going to do this, all right? If. We ever meet in person, okay? If we ever meet in person, I'm taking you to Target and dinner's on me, bruh. 
you could get the you could, you can get uh and, and I'm not taking you to Walmart now, okay? I'm taking you to Target, Target, okay? <laughs> and we gonna get us we gonna get us some crayons and we are gonna take the red ones out, even if I gotta buy because I'm pretty sure they don't have just red crayon boxes. I mean, you would probably know, you know. <laughs> But if they don't have just a box of red crayons, brother, I will get you uh, some crayons. I'm gonna, I'm vegan. Um, I know there's no, I know there's no meat in. Well, actually, there might be some. Some. I'm not gonna have any crayons. I'm gonna let you enjoy yourself, and I'll enjoy a vegan meal, and we'll chop it up, man. You know what I'm saying? And you gonna let me? <laughs> I'm about to get a picture of you with the crayons in your teeth. <laughs> Target's got the high end stuff. I'm pretty sure there's some there's probably animal byproduct in crayons though. You know what I'm saying? So noose, if you're looking to be a vegan man, we might have to find you some vegan crayons. You know, plant based crayons. All right. <laughs> he said the high end crayons at Target, man. That's real. That's real. See, I see somehow I knew that. I figured Target would have the high end crayons, and you know Walmart probably just running a mill crayon. But uh, yeah, seeing a Marine infantry munch down crayons is both horrifying and glorious. It's like something you want to see, though, right? Great Crusader. I mean, I'm sure you wouldn't be able to look away. I'm sure you wouldn't be able to look away. I wouldn't be able to look away. You know what I'm saying? Like you enjoying those news? Crayola is your favorite? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't lay it on then. Let me see. Let me see. That's a good question. Another good question. So, news. First off, news. I'm gonna preface this by saying there. Actually, news. You. You. You was in the Marines. So, for anybody who's thinking about joining the Marines, the crayons. Wait a minute. Are there crayons in the marine MREs? Do y'all get different MREs? Anyway, I, I won't. <laughs> uh, so, Noose Urshan. Let me know if I'm saying that right, man. Noose Urshan. Uh, he asked, how... Oh, you're vegan, eh? Good for you, man. How does... Yeah. Uh, how does that work with the MREs, though? Do you think that many vegan menus, do they have many vegan menus on the current lineup? OK, so what they have as far as MREs go, uh, they are halal meals. And I'm honestly, I'm pretty sure. I want to say the halal meals are they definitely do not have pork in them. I don't want to know. I'm not sure if they're vegan, but if I was in the position where I had to eat MREs, uh, I would choose a vegetable MRE. There's not a specific vegan MRE that I know of or have seen in my uh, time in the army where it was like vegan meat patty. You know what I mean? So I would choose something with uh, that was a vegetable uh, MRE. I would choose something that had, that was like a vegetable MRE and, you know, read the label on certain things like I, if I didn't know what it had in it, but halal meals would be the way to go. So, but you asking me, how does that work with the MREs? For me, <laughs> your boy don't eat MREs. <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> mm. 
But if I was forced to eat MREs, uh, there's plenty of options where you could probably get you a vegetable MRE. Take a look at the label because it does it does say what's in it, and uh, go from there, man. You know. But I would I would tell them, look, y'all need to bring some halal MREs out here so that I uh, have better options on what to, what I can eat. You know what I mean? What's up, Palando Stork? Okay. Uh, New said they have Skittles and Airheads, so they're the closest thing we get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can munch on those. Yeah, see, there's vegetable crumble. Uh, there was an MRE. I know this is not a vegan MRE, anything with the vegan stuff, but the omelet MRE. Oh, my God. That was the worst MRE. Yo, the best MREs are the ones, uh, are the... Uh, Okay, so New said, gotta say, y'all can see what he said, but gotta say the things I love the most about the Marines is my M16 and my spaghetti MRE. The best MREs are the Italian ones, in my opinion. Some of the best, some of the best MREs are the Italian ones. Those are for emergencies. <laughs> <laughs> And I ain't had an emergency yet where I had to eat an MRE. I, I got MREs now. I got MREs. And I don't have no box in my truck. <laughs> chili with beans. Yeah, vegetable chili with beans. There's options. There's vegetable options for the MREs for sure. Vegetable crumble. Worst MRE I had to say was the omelet. I remember on the tank, there would be boxes of just omelet MREs. Southwest black beans. You know that beef taco is good though. That beef taco. I ain't always been vegan, so that beef taco is good. I think that beef taco. Actually, I think I got a video with me eating a beef taco MRE. You should go check that out. You know. I also got a video with how to heat up an MRE, so you can go check that out too. Southwest black beans. See Southwest. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, beef. See, see, Stuart, know what's up? Uh, I gotta see that Southwest black beans. You probably, if you're a vegan, you probably could eat that. I'd have to look at it though. And and Stuart say it's one of the best ones. So noose. That's the long answer. Worst I had was the frozen beef patty. Frozen beef patty. What made me go vegan? My life, I wanted to change my life. And actually, I'm going to tell you like this. When you got good people around you, right, and they doing good things, you want to follow their lead. You know what I mean? You want to follow their lead. And a good friend of mine that I know for a very long time, uh, he came to me and he said him and his family was going vegan. He said him and his family was going vegan. And I was like, you know, my this he wouldn't bring nothing to me that wasn't good for me. You know what I'm saying? Especially not without a disclaimer. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and uh, that coupled with the fact that I enjoy challenging myself to lifestyle changes, uh, it was, it was, it was, a, it was, that was it. You know, that was it. It was, now, there was a point though before that where I had thought about going vegan and I was like, man, Cheese is, cheese is good. You know what I mean? You want me to give up cheese? Like, you could throw cheese on almost almost anything, and it will gain some points. And you want me to give up cheese? Uh, but when he came to me, and he was like, I'm, I'm going vegan. And he said his family was going vegan. And that's my family, so... I like challenging myself and I know it was a healthy route off the rip. I just was stuck in my ways of wanting to eat cheese and ice cream and things like that. Because if you know me, I love ice cream. Uh, it was a route, you know, it was too easy. It was too easy at that point. Cause then I had a good support system too. You know, I have people around me that I spend time with that are also beat. Uh, I wanted to say something else about vegan, but oh, come to find out, 
you won't have to give up cheese. <laughs> you don't have to give up cheese. Now, it's not going to be cheese, you know, like coming from the cow, you know. But it'll do. It'll do. Now, the ice cream, that's hit or miss, boy. Your boy be struggling, you know. Your boy be struggling. But, uh, you know, sometimes when you struggle, you got you, you struggling for something greater good, something better. So it's not even that big of a deal. You know, you got when you got a good support system, too, it's even easier. When I was deployed to Afghanistan, noose, noose. When I was deployed, when I was deployed to Afghanistan, we resorted to hosting slapping contests in my unit. The winner of the slapping con contest got first pick on his MRE for that night's dinner. Needless to say, by the end of the deployment, we all had red faces. Hey, listen. Hmm. For those that want to join the army, man, or the military, period, there's a lot of things that are different from the outside world. You know, you're going to you're going to have <laughs> slapping contests. You know, it's a possibility. You know what I mean? Depend where you're at, what you're doing, you know, what you want to participate in. We just, especially infantry, especially combat MOSs, man. Combat MOSs, I think we find ways to entertain ourselves, you know, in certain ways that build camaraderie between each other because I guarantee them guys was close because ain't nobody going to let another man slap him in his face for a, let him slap him in his face for an MRE that he ain't tight with. You know what I'm saying? You know, or they, or they gain in that trust. So yo, I just want to bring mention though, beef taco smack. See beef taco. I agree. Yeah. But yeah, man. Beef stew. Yeah. Beef stew's good. Beef stew's good. Uh, wouldn't be a top pick, but it's definitely not a last pick. For sure. It ain't no beef taco. You know, it ain't no... Uh, Santi said one too. Santi said one too. That was... Oh, uh, that's good. The one that Santi said, y'all might have to scroll up. I mean, it ain't none of those, but it ain't no last pick like omelet. I, I think they actually got rid of omelet. I think they got rid of omelet. Now they got pizza. Yeah, they got pizza now. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, they got pizza, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to try to get you a pizza one, Santi. Somehow, I think I I'm going to try to get you a pizza one. You know it's going to last. <laughs> I hope to see you soon, brother. So, I'm going to get you a pizza one. I've only tried a few MREs. My uncle was a four. Okay, Trooper Geo. Did you, Trooper Geo, didn't you, did you ask another question earlier? Did I miss that, man? If I did, I apologize. If I did, as I seen your name come up earlier, I don't know. All right, so Trooper Geo said, I've only tried a few MREs. My uncle was a former Green Beret, so he was able to pull some strings to get some sent to me. I like spaghetti and Southwest chicken the best. I'm telling you, Geo, and anybody else, you know, but Geo. The Italian MREs, Italian MREs, I think they all, they all worthy of an honorable mention, you know, they, you, the elbow macaroni, elbow, elbow macaroni, it's macaroni and beef, macaroni and something, the spaghetti, that's a top one, the macaroni one, that's a top, anything with the, the ravioli, that's good, these are like, all across the board, like somebody offer you an MRE and they like, we got any of these in there, but there's no beef taco. Get you any of those. 
the Southwest chicken. I'm not sure. Did I have the Southwest chicken? I think a lot of people that I have eaten MREs with have said that the Southwest chicken is good. Remember in basic during cold week, I got a frozen beef and drilled in. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Remember in basic during cold week, I got a frozen beef drill, beef and drill didn't let us use the warmers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I you know, you're gonna have some great memories from basic training, man, when you look back. You know, when you look back at it, uh, I definitely remember eating some cold MREs. It was Kentucky at the time, and Kentucky has every – at that time, I'm pretty sure it was probably the same, but Kentucky has every season in one day, you know. So at that time, it was lizard winter season when we had to eat outside, and they wasn't letting us use the warmers. I think I think it was a time thing or – but you know when we went through basic training, it, I don't. <laughs> they did some stuff to us that today they probably be like, "No, don't do that, don't do that to them." You know, we we used to stand outside. Now, let me not go to saying none of that because that was a uh, that was a good time, you know. And I don't want to put a negative light on it, but uh, it made us tougher. And maybe eating those cold MREs did make us tougher too, in a way, you know. But I definitely remember that. And it's the and the beef inside the package is already kind of like shrimp wrap. I, I have to show you, but then it's hard because it's frozen. So <laughs> then they expect my they expect my guy to eat that <laughs> without heating it up. But my favorite memory was serving, and that that's my you know just. My favorite memory since I've been in the army, I've made a lot of memories out there in the army, and it would be it's man, I mean, but my favorite memory, my favorite memory, ooh, I'm gonna think I, my favorite memory was definitely knowing that I had somebody that I cared about out there with me because we was out there at the same time in different locations, but it just makes you feel like somebody you really know got your back, you know what I mean? Not that the people that I was there with didn't have my back or or uh, I didn't know them, you know, but I didn't, like, I know, know him, you know what I mean? So that is, that was one of my favorite memories. I have plenty of memories of it. Plenty. Uh, remember, basically, my favorite memory was serving on Iraq. Okay, the omelet was only in service. New said the omelet was only in service for one year, I think. I luckily enough not to have it on the menu when I was in. My older brother was unlucky enough to get the to get it though. He was in the first infantry division. Yeah, man. You know why it was uh only for one year? Because it was nasty, okay? <laughs> Nobody was eating it. We would come back from the field and there would be whole boxes of just omelet people who would have it like one time be like this is disgusting like especially when you got stuff like beef taco and any of the italian mres like i said sitting there why am i have that nasty omelet for you feel me Your older brother, but you know what? Hopefully he didn't have to eat it. <laughs> Hopefully your older brother didn't have to eat it. Country Captain Chicken was nice according to my brother. I think I've had that before too, it's decent. But yeah. Let me see. Well, we've been in here a hot minute chopping it up. If anybody is watching at the beginning of this, the beginning of the live stream, a couple minutes in, maybe 10, 20 minutes, I answered some questions about how to join the army, what you should do. 
you know, how to get your life together before you even talk to a recruiter. Uh, so definitely take those things into consideration. Like I was saying, make sure your weight's good, study for the ASVAB. As soon as you walk through there, if your weight, weight's not good, you're not gonna be able to, they're gonna, they, you're gonna have a hard time. If you don't study for the ASVAB, uh, because the first thing they're gonna do is give you a practice test. They're gonna give you a practice test. And if you don't score well on the practice test, they're not gonna send you to take the real test. So that's why you need to study before you even get there. People texting me about the live stream, let me see, maybe. Uh, they're texting about work. I got any other questions out there? Anything else? I really enjoy chopping it up with y'all. I hope I answered everybody's questions. Check out some of my other videos. Nah, he said, man, family dinners. Great Crusader said, man, family dinners are fun at my house. I have three brothers who are in the, all in separate branches. And then there's me who's in the Navy. Uh, it's probably super fun for them. And it's probably just slightly less fun for you. <laughs> With you being in the Navy, unless somebody, yeah, yeah, would you being in the Navy is probably less, slightly less fun for you because I already know how they probably get on you. And you said you got three brothers. Are you the are you the youngest, man? Uh, <laughs> but it's all in good fun and love. You know what I mean, y'all, sir. Thank y'all for your service, man. You, your brothers. I really appreciate it from one service member to another. We don't get enough appreciation. If you see somebody, they don't have that military discount. Tell them they need to get they get they weight up. You see what I'm saying? You see, see, it's already starting. See, I bet he, I, I, that ain't the first time he heard it. <laughs> Tell them to get they weight up with that military discount because it's the least they could do. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, so. I just want to tell y'all I appreciate that. And I also appreciate y'all for coming through. Hopefully, I'll be able to make this a regular thing, God willing. Uh, and I hope to see all y'all back again. I hope to see all y'all back again. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. I appreciate that, too. It don't cost you nothing. You know, if you hit the like button, the like button don't cost you anything either. If you don't like it, hit the like button two times. Make sure you lock it in. You know, so we know that you don't like it. Uh, Santiago, Santi said to all those that serve, serve from the bottom of my heart. Thank you and your families. I agree and uh, echo that once again, because what it takes for us to do this job down to the smallest thing, people don't really, a lot of people really don't understand. You know, so uh, yeah. Hit that like button. We got a lot of people in here. I only see two likes. So I appreciate that if you did like it. If you didn't like it, like I said, hit the like button two times. Let me know you didn't like it. <laughs> if, you ain't, if you ain't subscribed, if you haven't subscribed and you ain't here, make sure you subscribe. There's no finer weapon than the, weapon than the M16A4. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, you know. <laughs> but I, 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 you know, I, I feel you. I feel you. I can see that. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, though, Trooper Geo, you know. No finer looking weapon? But I'm with you, though. Yeah, but I'm with you though. Oh, we got somebody new in here. Hold on, let's 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 welcome them and then it is personal preference though, for real, because the M4, uh, I feel like with I feel like the adjustable stock is uh 
an advantage. Yo, big shout out. Appreciate everybody that took the time. Lola J, Santi. Great Crusader, Jessica. Nyanmar, Noose. Palando, Stort, Big Stort. Trooper Geo, I'm trying to shout everybody out that came through and chopped it up with me. If I missed you, which I don't think I did, I apologize. Thanks again for your service. Thank y'all for coming out. I hope to see y'all next time. Hit that like, subscribe, like, subscribe, like, and subscribe. Share. You feel me? And I appreciate that too. Y'all have a good night.